You've heard the terms before. PvP, player versus player. A subgenre, so to speak, inside an MMORPG that gives a strong focus on players fighting and attacking each other for glory. PvP MMOs tend to be more niche than their counterparts as they can be more stressful or annoying depending on the side you're on. And a lot of the times, it is a lot harder to do PvP MMOs without a guild, and if you don't like playing with a large amount of people, then it's probably a big turnoff. PvP MMOs tend to have more endgame objectives as well that revolve around fighting other players, taking over territories, or sieging castles, and a lot of players tend to get tired of this stuff real quick. PvE is the exact opposite. Player vs Environment. The focus of the game and its endgame content is surrounded by taking on various bosses and NPCs, leveling up through crafting, or perhaps spending your time in a cozy player-owned house, spending more time working together to achieve goals against non-playable characters, and less focus on plotting out your next enemy player on the server. Both of these types of MMOs tend to lean slightly into another. PvP games normally still have some sort of boss fights or NPCs to fight most of the time, but they may not be as engaging as you'd find in PvE, and it may not be something that you really need to worry about when you hit endgame because it's not the primary objective. PvE games tend to have similar PvP activities such as battlegrounds and arenas, but no focus on fighting players out in the open world. Few MMOs tend to fall in the middle of this where the two systems intertwine with each other, and the ones that do tend to have two very separate player bases within the game with their own goals that aren't required to work together. It's hard to get players on both sides of the spectrum to work together and accomplish goals that will require taking on PvP and PvE when the majority of both sides seem to despise the other. But this is what we call PVX, and it is the goal Ashes of Creation has set in mind when it comes to the type of MMO that it wants to be. There are other MMORPGs out there that might consider themselves PVX. World of Warcraft could be, Guild Wars 2, even New World. But as I just said, these MMOs tend to isolate the two player bases from each other, but this is where Ashes of Creation will be set apart from them. The biggest impact you will find on this is with nodes. Most of the service content, PvP and PvE, are locked behind these nodes. Areas of the map that develop over time from players contributing XP to them and leveling up cities within. Starting off, all of these contributions will be more likely through PvE as you jump in the starting area and quest and craft your butts off to earn that money to be the first to unlock freeholds or whatever you want to spend it on. Eventually, all of your work will level up the node and you will start to see the world change with each stage and each node that gets unlocked within your server. Behind this content, you will find all of those PvE activities you desire. 8 player dungeons, 40 man raids, wandering world bosses, massive quest chains that move the story, and so much more. All of these systems unlocked in a world where players can freely kill each other if they choose. That is, if they dare risk the consequences of the corruption system, which includes gear drops and XP debt. Between the nodes, trade routes will begin to sprout up with player run caravans. Goods collected by the gathering profession can be taken between these cities to potentially make more gold in a region that might be in short supply of what you could offer it. These caravans will be key to making money and bringing resources from node to node, where the PvE players can sell the materials they have collected. But caravans are considered a PvP event, an area where corrupted penalties are waived and players can fight each other with minimal consequences. So while you may be a PvE crafter at heart, you'll want to get ready for the fight with other players who want your goods. You and your PvE guild could also be heading to fight a new dungeon boss that just popped up due to a node leveling, but you'll want to bring some players built for a PvP fight, because these bosses are in open world dungeons. Anyone could just wander in. But as a PvP player on the other side, you might want to engage in this boss fight instead of attacking any raids because these bosses drop rare crafting materials. Crafting will be your way to get best in slot end game gear. So no matter how many people you want to fight, you'll need to take on a few dungeon raids to get geared for it. Those of you going out to do your daily questing could and would probably bring you into world events in that area, bringing players together while you might just want to finish those commissions. And as you run into more people, the greater the risk for PvP. And if you're a PvE player out there just gathering for a profession, you still will want to be ready for a fight, because a percentage of gatherable materials will drop upon death, even if you aren't flagged for PvP or corrupted. But the biggest tie-in will be when players want to unlock new content. Since content is locked behind nodes, if you don't like what's happening in the region and you would like the nodes to change, well, this would require you to embark on node wars, which will have players take on various PvP and PvE objectives to gain control of territories and 
eventually this could escalate to a full on siege of a node, where if destroyed, it could change the direction of the server forever, locking away all of that existing content while providing new content for players. Even if you aren't doing this for content, you may have made a home out of an existing node. You may have a house that is developed into a mansion as you've owned that non-instance house since the first days of the node's life, all the way up through it becoming a metropolis, and that house could be worth a ton of gold. This could all be gone if that node falls, so you may want to take those PvE pants off and put on some PvP pants to literally fight for your home. PvX in Ashes of Creation is going to be a ton of fun with how these systems are meant to interact, but the big issue I think you are already seeing is there appears to be more risk as a PvE player than a PvP player. If you are a PvP player, then you won't care if you attack a caravan, siege a node, or disrupt a raid taking down an enemy boss. The biggest thing you'll have to worry about is figuring out raid mechanics to get some new crafting material that could be stolen off a corpse or bought on the market instead. PvE players though, as much as this game is crowned a PvX game may absolutely hate it at times due to the fact that everything they are setting out to do may be at risk. There is really no avoiding PvP, while avoiding PvE is going to be something that is pretty easy to do if you really wanted to. This is a balance that will be extremely hard to get right, and I believe is why games tend to isolate the two sides from each other. It is something that Intrepid will want to keep a close eye on in Alpha 2 and really figure out ways for PvP players to be more at risk when interrupting PvE content. Ashes of Creation does in fact need its PvE players as well for the game to function as intended, and if they aren't satisfied or aren't enjoying the game, they'll probably quit. Then a lot of the PvP objectives could start to crumble around you, putting servers in a kind of a stalemate. PvX can be a very complicated system to maneuver, and could be one that makes or breaks whether Ashes of Creation is a new standard for the genre. And it's not as simple for Ashes as just turning on PvE servers. The majority of these systems rely on players interacting in PvP systems. The world is meant to create conflict between players. It is built on a risk versus reward take, so everything that you do may have a counter of a risk to it. So most of the time, big decisions aren't going to be an easy choice. And if you just flip a switch and turn on a PvE server, well, that kind of takes away from all of this, and it's really not a solution for any of it. But it also, again, goes back and it isolates those players into a PvP category and a PvE category, which is is not what a PVX game is meant to do. As we continue through Alpha 2 though, I imagine this will be something that really gets looked at and addressed and hopefully balanced in the right way to cater to both sides of it so there is equal risk and equal reward.